Harry Potter, Star Wars, Star Wars, Harry Potter, two of the most successful franchises in entertainment history. But they both came to a crossroads where the creators had to make a decision and the creators made opposite decisions. What was that choice? And who made the right choice? You have chosen wisely. The original Star Wars came out in 1977. It was an immediate hit with kids and adults all over the world. Empire Strikes Back came out three years later and interest in the Star Wars universe only got stronger. Return of the Jedi, The Last of the Trilogy came out in 1983. That's six years after the original. Six long years after millions of kids bought their first Star Wars toy. So who do you make that third movie for? The kids who saw it in 1977 and were now six years older? Not to mention the teens and adults who were even older than that. Or for the little kids who just discovered it on video or HBO? Well, Lucas and his team decided to aim for the batch of current kids and put in some cutesy elements which really annoyed the piss out of the older fans. But the Harry Potter franchise did something completely different. <laughs> and now for something completely different. They matured with the audience. I read the first Harry Potter novel in 2000. It was highly recommended by three people whose opinions I really trusted. Two of them were professional writers and one of them was my then girlfriend, who's no longer my girlfriend. Because she's my wife, hey yo. I thought the first book was great. It worked as a fantasy, it worked as a mystery, it worked as a hero's journey, a boarding school drama. It was funny where it needed to be funny and scary-ish where it needed to be scary-ish. I immediately read the second and thought, it's good, but it's not as good. It's a sequel. It hits similar beats as the first, but doesn't knock your socks off because it's the second time and you've seen this stuff before. Now. If J.K. Rowling had kept going in this vein, it could have been like a Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew mysteries, but with magic, which could have been a fun and successful series. I just don't think many 30-year-olds were going to get into it. I don't know too many adults checking out Captain Underpants, no matter how popular it is with the kids. But it was the third book, Prisoner of Azkaban, that she really upped the game. She realized her audience was getting older and more mature, so the book got a little more mature. The plot got a little more complicated. The characters had more shading and moral ambiguity. And then in the end of the fourth book, Goblet of Fire came the turning point of the series. Voldemort returned, a student was killed. It was dark, violent, and ominous. And the Harry Potter universe never went back to the lighthearted tone it had before. So who was right? George Lucas? or J.K. Rowling? And I don't know, I'm asking. This isn't a rhetorical question. I didn't ask it because I think I know the answer. I did a video on what I thought was the problem with Return of the Jedi, and most people seem to like it, except for the people who were pissed off that I suggested reworking the beginning, which would lose Princess Leia in a bikini. Which, I see now maybe it was a mistake and I should rethink my rethinking because she a pretty lady. You underestimate my power. But while I thought the real problem with Jedi were structural problems, I didn't like that the series got more mature with Empire and then seemed to get less mature with Jedi. So maybe George Lucas should have done what J.K. Rowling did and got more mature with the audience. But here's the thing. Star Wars had a pretty phenomenal run without aging up with the audience. Sure, Gen Xers like me hated Jar Jar Binks and a lot of the kiddie stuff in The Phantom Menace. But the prequels did great at the box office and brought in a whole new younger generation of Star Wars fans, despite what us old fogies were whining about on the internet. Get off my lawn. Then the Disney sequels came out. Somehow Palpatine returned. And 
they annoyed not just the Gen Xers, but they really upset the Millennials who grew up with the prequel trilogy. Mm. First time. But they brought in a whole new generation of Star Wars fans, so maybe the right thing to do was to keep aiming for kids. But then there's Rogue One, which was really cool and not aimed for kids. I mean, look at this scene. And Andor, which was also not meant for kids. They were both aimed at a more mature audience, and they're, in my opinion, the best live-action Star Wars since the original trilogy. So maybe the right choice is to age with your audience. I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. Except that the ratings for Andor weren't that great. So maybe the right thing is to keep making stuff for kids. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. And what's going on with the Potter franchise? Fantastic Beast was certainly aimed at a more mature audience than the first Harry Potter books. And they were a crap fest. You said it, they stink on ice. I mean, they stunk so bad they canceled the whole franchise. So maybe the right move is to keep making stuff for little kids. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. Hmm. So maybe it doesn't matter what age group you're catering to. Maybe the important thing is to write a good story. So that's it then. You have to write a good story, no matter what audience you're catering to. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I'll accept that. 